Okay, welcome to tutorial number eight, I think it is, um, which relates to using the character you've drawn up in Inkscape, which will probably be your example of the Wolverine, and how we integrate it into a completely new piece of software that you may not have used before, which is called GIMP. Now, GIMP is a program that stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program, and it is the free equivalent to Photoshop. Um, it's a really useful package for photo editing and I'm going to give you uh, a tutorial here on how we basically uh, enhance our vector graphics using some of the uh, magical filter tools that we've got on this particular pro this particular program. First thing you need to do is learn how to set up a document and the way we do that like any piece of software is we go to file at the top here and new and what that will then do is bring up a create new image dialog box where we look at our template and pick A4 and landscape if you want to check your advanced options ensure that the resolution is at 300 dpi um, or inches pixels per inch um, I think that that's yeah that, that's a good setting to have it at and ensure that obviously you fill with the background color which will be white um, the color space is RGB um, which for default is fine because we're going to be delivering all our work on screen anyway and hit OK and what you will then get is a big white A4 landscape page pop up on your screen whilst my computer decides to begin working um, the tutorial that I'm going to show you today is a, uh, a little trick where what we're going to do is it's it's a it's called the fly apart technique and it's a good tutorial a good technique is to make basically your graphics look like they're disintegrating. This is a great little uh, a great little tool to to use uh, a little trick to use when you're enhancing text or anything that you've you've created in a vector package. Okay. Um, Right, I just had to pause that to allow my computer to load up, but uh, now we've got our document in place, and this is our A4 landscape page, uh, I will want you to focus on this box here, which is your layers box. This is going to come into play quite a lot throughout this tutorial. Um, what we've got now got to do is integrate our Wolverine into this particular workspace. So the way we do that is we go to File and Open. And what I'd like you to do is go to your either wherever you've got your your Wolverine located, whether it be on a USB stick or on a desktop in your documents. Find that file that you exported earlier out of Inkscape. Uh, select it and click Open. Now, what will happen is this will load up in a completely separate window. Um, so, as you'll notice, if I click on that now, um, it is actually not attached to the A4 page yet we have to do something you know anyone familiar with Photoshop will know that we have to select this and bring it in uh, and copy and paste it into the document and the way we do that is very much like Photoshop we'll maximize the screen and go to this tool here which is your rectangular or rectangle select tool uh, click down and create a box let go uh, when you finish and you've got the right size and to know that the whole page is selected you'll see a dotted line appear all around your graphic um, once you've done that, hit edit and copy, red cross the document, you don't need to save anything, and then you're left with just the A4 page. Now at this moment in time, the Wolverine is currently floating around on your computer, we need to now pin it onto your A4 page. So the way we do paste it in is go to edit, paste, and as not as a new image, but as a new layer, and that will then bring it in as a document and stick it as your first layer within your layers box. Um, and what we can then do is move that down using the move tool here uh, click on the graphic and just sort of drag it around to where you've got it in a decent position I'm just going to move it to sort of towards the middle of the page now the fly apart um, technique uh, we work on two, gra two layers it's not a huge amount of layers just two and the way I create the second layer which is going to be a duplicate of the first is right click on the clipboard and duplicate layer here and what that will then do is create a copy of the original. Now, what we need to do with the flyaway apart, the fly fly apart technique works better uh, to make it look more disintegrating esque, if that's the best way to put it, um, is by making it that little bit bigger. So I'm going to click on the top layer here as it's selected, 
and that will bring up your grid and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to stretch this a little bit not too much I'm not going to make it any bigger I'm just going to stretch it uh, so it's a little bit wider and then I'm going to hit scale now just ensure that the scale padlock is unlocked not locked ensure that it's unlocked and hit scale and that will then load up okay so there you have your second layer which is slightly large wider than the other and um, what we're now going to do is just very quickly make it go invisible by applying a thing called a layer mask to it so the way we get out to our layer mask is we right click on the layer we want there to apply it to and make it that we right click on the layer we want to make invisible and we right click and uh, add a layer mask here now this dialog box really relates to the kind of color boxes here and we can make the layer mask uh, relate to the foreground or the background and what we really want to do is maybe to make it black so just ensure that black full transparency is uh, clicked and hit add and that will make it go invisible it's still there it's just got this invisible mask over the top of it to stop it from from being seen now what I want you to do is then just click back on the first layer that you've brought in and what we're going to do is just just take elements out of it using the eraser tool and a, a nice eraser font uh, style that we've got by default. So if you click the eraser tool, which is here, just the once, and go to your brush settings and just make sure that you're clicked on Vine. And once you've done that, ensure that your opacity is at 100 and the size I would say is anywhere between 350 and 200 to make it a decent size and then just click away and just getting rid of some of the edges of your lower layer okay just clicking away there now what you'll see is this is sort of the start of the disintegration process or the fly apart technique um, now once you've done that and you're happy with the kind of uh, the mount you've actually taken off the the, the, the lower layer go to your the, the upper layer click on it and just do the same now you've got your green box showing you where the graphic is so just to make sure that you've got it in place just click away areas around that green box and as you'll start to see this sort of dis disintegration kind of fly apart technique is starting to come to life now you can go into more detail by creating the the size of the brush to make it a little bit smaller so that there's only little bits are now f are being uh, removed from the upper layer um, so if I go to 145 you can see there's a little bit more so it's not just all one size and once you've done that you should have a kind of the basis for your fly apart uh, technique uh, these lines are quite hard and we can also see if you look, look closer that there's these stalks um, showing up to get rid of those stalks just go to color and threshold and you can see automatically that they kind of get removed so click OK and that really gets rid of all your stalks and then we're just going to soften the edges a bit and we do that by going to filters at the top blur and Gaussian bl or Gaussian blur and we'll just wait for that dialog box to kick in Depending on the speed of your computer, obviously it should pop in uh, quite quickly. But my laptop at this moment in time is uh, is being a little bit slow. It will give you a preview of your your ma your layer mask and to show you what the blur will look, what the edges will look like. Uh, and I'd say six and horizontal at six for horizontal and six for vertical should be fine. Uh, click OK, and that will slightly soften all your edges. And then what we'll then do is go to the lower layer and add a wind effect to it to make it look like it's blowing away. And the way we do that is go to filter, distorts, and wind. Now there's loads of filtered effects on there that you can try out with other things if you wanted to. And I'm just going to scroll that down to give you an indication of what that wind effect is going to look like. So if you go to your edges, there it is there. Now uh, you can increase threshold of it so that obviously it makes the 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 the, the dash lines a little uh, a little smaller uh, if you increase it or you can make them even larger by just 
decreasing the number. Now the strength of the wind obviously you will increase it to make it more kind of blurred. So I'm choosing 3 and 15 but I mean you could make it even uniform and just go 6 and 6. Ensure that the style is wind and not blast because obviously that's the effect that you'll get with blast. That might work if you want to try it with your graphic but I'm going to pick wind. Make sure the direction is left so it's going with the direction of your of your of, of the upper layer and not right so the wind's going the opposite direction that would look a bit funny and also ensure that the leading button is ticked. Hit OK. OK and there is that second filter effect. And what we then do is click the top layer here with your left button, right click on the layer and just merge it down. And that then sticks it all together. Now what I would then like you to do is export it as a JPEG peg and bring it into your graphical, te graphical techniques portfolio so that you can indicate what you did next to the actual original Wolverine and to do that you just go to it, file export to find your folder okay to be in here and you can export it as a, a PNG and I'm going to call it Wolverine fly apart hit export the dialog box should kick in which you will just click OK when it does appear or export so the compression level is at 9 so hit export and that is now slowly loading into your folder Once you've done that, just to speed the process up, you can go back to your Inkscape file. And as I said, the process would be to then import this back into Inkscape to show everyone what you've done with not only the original vector, um, but the actual Photoshop, or sorry, the, the GIMP program. So to bring it in, just go to File at the top. import now because this was saved at 300 dpi obviously it's going to come in really really big so you will need to scale it down so I'm going to go to my USB stick where I've got my stuff There's Wolverine fly apart and click open. And that will slowly but surely merge its way into this document. If it's PNG, it'll ask you for an input, just ensure that it's embedded and hitting OK. Loading. Okay, um, I, I just shortly paused that so to, to wait for the image to actually load in um, and scaled it down obviously uh, to, to the necessary um, proportions. So what I'm looking for as an end result really is this uh, with your next to your your vector graphic of your Wolverine and um, and the actual Im image manipulated version uh, next to it with annotations of how you've done it. So that's the tutorial for Wolverine and. Um,